Just another smart-looking pleasure craft. No, sir. This is the biggest advance in marine travel since Christopher Cockrell invented the hovercraft. Carrying 60 passengers at 35 knots, it's the HM2, the first hovercraft to enter service with rigid sidewalls, allowing conventional transmission. Because it's as quiet as a displacement vessel, costs less to buy and run than any comparable marine vehicle, British Rail have taken HM2s into service on the ferry run from Portsmouth to Rye. It's a route they've been ferrying for years. The old-time steamer is still available, slow and stately. And for those who want to uh, be out of the water all the way, there's the SRN6, now an established form of commuter travel. This high-performance passenger craft, faster than the HM2, is best suited for longer trips and tougher going. Being truly amphibious, it can operate from almost any base, irrespective of tide and depth of water. Ideally, the HM2 moves in sheltered waters, using conventional docking and moorings. But an SRN6 can pull up anywhere. The concrete strip is more for convenience of passengers. To get an expert's comparison of SRN6 and HM2, we spoke to Charles Brindle, general manager of British Rail's hovercraft subsidiary. The two types of hovercraft are fundamentally complementary to each other. One is amphibious, one is totally waterborne, and relies for its berthing upon conventional berthing facilities, conventional dock facilities. The amphibious craft, by virtue of its being free of the surface of the water, is very fast. With these type of craft, the SRN6, at operating at speeds of 55, 60 knots. With the immersed sidewall type of craft, like the HM2, speeds of about 35 knots. Now, if you have a fairly short route, as is the route between Portsmouth and Ryde, where the HM2 is now operating, a distance of four miles, then the difference between 35 knots and 55 knots is a matter of so little time that the improved economics of the slower craft make it a much more attractive proposition. We're looking at other routes now for HM2 and, of course, looking at routes for HM2 successors, the bigger immersed sidewall craft that are going to follow in the next year and the following year. Built by Halmatic Limited, the HM2 is 51 feet long with 20 feet in the beam. Two diesel engines at the stern drive conventional marine propellers. A third diesel engine powers the five lift fans. Hull and sidewall construction is a lightweight sandwich of reinforced foam plastic set between sheets of rigid glass fiber. Cut the ship in half and both halves will float. Apart from safety, performance and profitability were the aim, getting people there in good time at low operating costs. Homer Marine Limited, who designed HM2, claim they've done it, and so encouraged are they by this success, they're planning two more hovercraft even bigger. One 100 feet long, the other 160 feet long. No doubt about it, modern travelers are riding on air. <laughs>